Hey everybody, welcome to the poll list. The poll list? The, the poll list. The poll. Oh. The poll. The poll list. The Look, poll we have different list. accents. There's nothing I can do about that. Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of The Poll List. Uh, it's basically a show, uh, kind of like Max vs. PC, they started a couple weeks ago, uh, but about comics, and the roles are reversed. Growing up, the only comics that I read were the Sonic comics that Archie did, uh, that my mom would buy for me, uh, from a drugstore that happened to have a post office in the back of it. They, uh, they published one of my letters one time. I guess I started with probably where everybody kind of starts is a superhero. You start with a superhero, you go into other stuff. Or you start with, like, Calvin and Hobbes, and then you get into, like, Sunday comics. I mean... I did read a lot of Sunday comics. I mean, that's probably actually where I would say it started. I sat around with my grandpa, and we read the newspaper all the time, and so then I would get the... I would get to the funnies. So he's been following comics like like his entire life, and uh, over the last several months, I've started actually getting into them and uh, starting to like really appreciate what's there. Not because of me. Not because of him. Uh, because of girls. Yeah. The only re the only reason I develop any interest. <laughs> and so as I'm getting more into comics, I thought it would be nice to do a show where we just kind of uh, talk and share that journey of learning more about comics. Uh, and also kind of like opening the door to other people that might want to start getting into comics while also like having something there for people who are already fans. Because there's a lot of times these characters have been going for so long that you don't even know where to start. And the truth is there's no really good place to start. You just pick a story and you go with it. And we're just going to talk about uh, something that we think is worth going out and reading. Giving you a little bit of information about what it is and uh, why we recommend it. As well as on top of those new comics that are coming out recently, we would like to take some time and talk about some older ones as well. Some older stories, maybe some one-offs uh, that maybe need a little bit more attention, deserve people to go in and talk about them more because, you know, they're fun and interesting and should be read. And as this is the first episode, obviously we're still figuring a couple things out in terms of uh, how it's all put together, so we would love feedback on that, anything that you think might be more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, let's, uh, let's jump in. What was that? I don't know. I'd beat you up if you weren't so much more attractive than me. If you watched the last video I made about comics, uh, you'll know that I, I'm, I'm very new to it, uh, but I gained an affinity for this uh, small publisher called Lionforge, uh, and they're recently launching this new uh, superhero line uh, called Catalyst Prime. Since then, they've actually started that line, and they've actually got two of them running already, with the third one starting in a little over two weeks. So for this first episode, I really wanted to briefly go over all of that, uh, just to kind of tell you guys uh, how that has started off and how it's going, and I think as each of the new comics starts, uh, I'll at least talk about the first episode, and just sort of what the style of the comic is and what sort of thing they're going for, uh, so that you'll know if it sounds interesting to you. For those that don't read comic books, starting anything is going to be difficult. You have 75 years of just Batman alone. Having said that, Lion Forge has done a great job so far of setting up a great universe. First off, there was a single issue event they did uh, called The Event. Uh, that sort of explains where all the powers come from, and, and it's a pretty well told story. It's very succinct, they had a lot of information to get out in a short amount of time. It sets up the villain for like the whole series really, really well, and it, uh, it, it creates a lot of questions uh, that I'm excited to kind of have answered throughout the series. And having these characters all be astronauts in this same like Armageddon endeavor is perfect. They have a similar backstory that they can all kind of key into. And right when the event happened, they also launched Noble Number no. One. That's the first of the superheroes that they're going to be showing. And uh, it is insane. What I found really remarkable uh, about Noble was that so little of it was told with the actual words, and it really just throws you right into the action. He's still figuring out how his powers work, so there's one time where he accidentally like breaks a guy's hand when he just meant to take the gun away. Even though Noble himself says almost nothing throughout the entire comic, uh, just the way that he acts 
uh, during these fights. Tells you everything you need to know about him. He's still going out and helping people. It's very Incredible Hulk. Like, not necessarily in the comics, but more like the, the, uh, the 70s TV show where, you know, like, he just goes around and, like, he's just running away, but as he's running away, he's always helping people. And I think that's, I think that's something that's really necessary for his character while he's suffering amnesia, but he still has this greater purpose in his own life that he wants to fulfill. You know, some people, when they lose their memory, that's the thing. They still know how to speak, they still know how to write. They'll have, like, random muscle memory that they have, and then there'll be actions they'll take, and, and they don't know why they're taking them, but they, it feels right. And it, I think that speaks to the core of a person. And I think the noble, as the title sort of indicates, I think what that is saying is that this is a person who, no matter what memory he has of himself, he is still that good person. He is a noble person. He is a person to look up to. You can have iterations of different superheroes, but when you come down to the core of any superhero, it is about being better, about being an example towards other people. He's very easy to sympathize with. He has an interesting set of powers, mostly built around telekinesis, and the artist's ability to tell a story through action uh, is very, very strong. It carries through into Noble Number 2, which is also really, really strong. And the whole thing is basically uh, almost more like a spy thriller than a superhero comic at times, uh, which I think is really, really cool. With Excel, we kind of go into a more of like a Spider-Man route. We go into this like fun, hip, cool kid who, who likes his powers. He doesn't abuse them. He does the right thing. He's going out and he's going like, you know, being a superhero. So that's good. He's a young Hispanic man who uh, accidentally wound up with the ability to, uh, as he describes it, slow down time and uh, just do a lot in a little amount of time. They're doing a really cool thing with his power where it's it's not really just that he can go really fast, it's more that uh, he doesn't feel the consequences of anything he does while time is slowed down until it stops. So it begins with this really cool sequence where like a plane gets hijacked and he just runs up off a building and smashes through the plane and, and, and saves everybody, and then runs to the hospital so that he can then collapse and feel all of the pain of having just run through a plane. He then also recovers by just uh, speeding up time until his bones have healed. And so I'm really curious to see if they're gonna do like a thing where uh, it makes his body age faster every time he does that or something. Because uh, it seems like he's gonna have to do that every time he ever fights. It very much feels more like a, like a, like a kind of campy fun time. And uh, I think I'm starting to appreciate that as I like reread it more. My one issue so far has been the collateral damage that has occurred because of him. Now, it's very, for me, it's already starting off to be like Man of Steel, where I'm like, I, I really want you to observe this. I really want this to be a big deal. Like, this could be a great lesson for him. Like, sure, he punches through a plane and he stops the hijacking, but what happens to the plane? It still just explodes, it still goes down, like it's not stopping everything. So I think that would be great, is a consequential thing. Because right now, a lot of his actions doesn't seem like he understands the reciprocations, as well as maybe all of his speed is damaging his body, actually. Maybe when he's using his power to heal himself, he's healing bones wrong, because they would still set wrong, potentially. There's a whole number of things that could be happening to him, and I think that's where the real interest for me lies. I may not be sold on it 100% yet, but I think that's kind of the beauty of it for me, is that now I get to keep reading. I want to make sure that I'm not right. <laughs> that I'm not, like, some asshole who, who's just like, it's trash, it's garbage, I didn't like the first issue. Like, come on, you, gotta, you, give, you give any sort of story just a little bit of time. And if it doesn't hook me, it doesn't hook me. I've got another one that I already like. I'm really curious to see where it goes once it gets into more serious subject matter. Uh, because right now it seems like they were really just setting up who this guy is because he wasn't in uh, the initial setup comic, so he really didn't have any sense of his character, so he had to be completely introduced. Also, the artwork is fantastic. I think that the way that they're drawing him, like, moving at, like, really high speeds might be my favorite way that I've seen that kind of thing portrayed before. I haven't read that many comics, but I just love, like, the really hard, solid lines that kind of remind me of Tron. Now, what we understand with Excel is that not everybody was one of the astronauts that get turned into these superheroes, like with Noble. 
through that examination of now it is more widespread, now we get different personalities. Some of these people will probably not have as much of a problem with getting them, or uh, these astronauts maybe have some sort of beef with the company that sent them on the mission in the first place. I find that kind of writing really riveting because it's something that can be very personal. We all think about this drastic situation. If it were ever to happen, what would we do in this scenario? And I think that's a huge proponent of what these comics are trying to talk about. It's building up to such a huge scale, like you can tell that it's going to be something huge once all these lines get going, that it's really exciting to see the pieces being put into place. And even though we've seen elements like amnesia and, you know, speedsters before, it feels like there's enough of a unique twist on it that I'm still kind of guessing what's going to come next. It's really cool to have uh, Astrid Powell, this, as far as we know up to that point, just like a normal, everyday woman. Uh, diving out of planes and, and, and paying off mercenaries and like going on a manhunt for her husband. Uh, it's just like, it's just been a really cool thing to watch. Here's one that I've really been wanting to talk about. So Batman, number 25, the first part of the War of Jokes and Riddles. This to me is some of the best Batman writing that's been going on right now. Now I'm a huge fan of the new 52 uh, Snyder and Coppola's run for the 50 issues that they got, or I guess 52. They made Batman probably my favorite iteration of Batman ever since the animated series. It was darkly gripping, it was human, and it was also terrifying and beautiful when he won. I've never been a huge Batman fan, but there's always been so much of it that I've always felt a little out of my depth and intimidated by it. Uh, but one thing that I've always really enjoyed was the concept of the Riddler. But it's never really felt like he's been taken as seriously and utilized as well as somebody like, I don't know, like the Joker has. I feel like the kind of complex that the Riddler has is a really fascinating superiority-inferiority complex to like play with as a driving motivation for, for a villain like this. And that's where the War of Jokes and Riddles is really tantalizing. This comic has some of the most interesting renditions of both the Joker and the Riddler that I think I've seen. This is a Joker who cannot laugh anymore. He doesn't find the humor in it anymore. Which is a really interesting uh, place for him to be at and also a very powerful driving emotion for a character that we usually don't associate with things like that. This is a character who's famous for when being asked, aren't you going to kill me? Saying, I don't have to kill you. It wouldn't be funny. So to have him come into this story already warped in a way is invigorating because we've had so many great stories with the Joker so far. Batman has ruined the funny and he doesn't know why. He hasn't learned how to play the game yet. The Joker is learning as the Batman is learning. And the Riddler, is just so insanely cold-blooded and darkly witty, it's it's really chilling. A vastly underused character, except for yet again, Snyder, in the Zero Year event, is no longer able to find the joy in his riddles. Yet again, Batman has proven that they mean nothing if he can't win. This is a guy who has to be the smartest man in the room, and if there's a man who's smarter than him, they'll kill him. It's really something else just watching him rattle off these uh, these riddles before just brutally killing somebody. And more so than anything else I've ever seen or read with a Riddler in it, you really get the sense here that he is in control and he's got some sort of plan. The Riddler has had almost as much history as the Joker, but has been downplayed due to the gimmicky nature of his character. Most of the time, you can attribute that to the 60s and the 70s, and so after that, Nobody's really taken the Riddler into a territory where I think that he's a formidable person. That's not to say that he can't be, it's to say I don't think he's getting the credit he deserves. Tom King is doing that in spades right now. He's taking a character who really needs an update and giving it to him. I feel like this comic is giving us the most chilling take on the Riddler as being a master manipulator. Uh, even to the point where it feels like he has the Joker in his pocket, which is uh, terrifying. And I think another thing to say is that these are definitely examples of Snyder's work previously being expounded upon. Uh, when we got 
Riddler in Zero Hour, he was very intimidating. He was excruciatingly painful to read, too, because he's just an asshole the whole time. It was a really strong setup, and this is actually an arc that I really want to be following, just to see how it develops. None of these people have had a real chance to kind of interact that wasn't all about Batman. And I think that's what I'm really excited about with the story, is that it's Joker versus Riddler. And Batman just happens to be there. They're not even focused on him anymore. They need to beat somebody. And so who else to turn to than the other people that Batman beats? And that seems so much better. Because yeah, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they have ever attacked each other? That's such a brilliant, brilliant place to start. And Tom King, you have my attention. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions for comics that you want us to check out and maybe talk about, uh, please let us know. We're going to be trying to do this regularly uh, just because, you know, comics come out either bi-monthly, monthly, they always come out on Wednesdays, and so we're going to be trying to do it in a way where you'd get enough of a notice that you can go pick these books up. Or, you know, on the books that we talk about that are past books, you'll be able to find them online, or you can find them in those same stores generally. A lot of comic book shops will have trade paperbacks in there as well. Uh, the, your local libraries as well, always donate to your local libraries. That's where I got all of my comics as a kid, as well as sneaking into my brother's room. So enjoy the story. And if you don't find the story that you're enjoying, look for another one. There's tons out there. There's so many different studios that are doing things. You will find something that you will enjoy, I guarantee you. And uh, we'll see you next time.